In the last video, we talked about phonological features. These are tiny snippets of information that we can use to describe a phoneme. For example, a phoneme could be plus stop, um, plus alveolar, minus voiced, for example. So we use these features to describe uh, phonemes, but we also mentioned that they can be used to write phonological rules so that the phonological rule would act not just in a single sound, but on an entire series of sounds, an entire natural class of sounds that shares the same feature. We're going to look at one such rule, and we're going to look at an example from German. So German has these two words, the word ich and the word ach. So ich has a sound here that is the palatal fricative. It's the uh, voiceless palatal fricative, ich. It also has a velar uh, voiceless fricative, as in ach, ich, ach. So let's say we want to figure out what is the relationship between these two sounds. And we managed to get some data for German. The first thing we need to figure out whenever we see phonological data is to try to find minimal pairs. Do these two sounds have any minimal pairs? And again, a minimal pair is two words where the only difference is that they have one sound or the other. Like they're different by only one sound. So go through the data and try to figure out if there is a minimal pair for these two sounds. Again, a minimal pair would be a word where the only diff two words where one has sh, one has the velar one, but that's the only difference between them. Are there any minimal pairs here? Please pause the video. Nope, nope, no minimal pairs. Uh, it looks like maybe these two are not different phonemes. Maybe they are allophones of the same phoneme. So once we've looked for minimal pairs and we don't find any, the next thing we need to do is to figure out which environments uh, they occur in. So where do we find the palatal fricative and where do we find the velar fricative? And I got you started on that. So in example number one, ich, you find the palatal one preceded by the vowel i and followed by the edge of a word, as you can see in this environment here. In example number seven, buch, we have the velar one. It is preceded by a long u, as you can see here, and it is followed by the edge of the word, as you can see in this whole environment here. So please go through all of the data points, through all of the words, and then try to extract every environment where you see the palatal fricative and every environment where you see the alveolar fricative and try to fill this out. Please pause the video. Look back. You should have something like this. Um, for example, we have uh, word five where you have milch and you find that the uh, palatal stop is preceded by the consonant L and followed by the edge of the word. We have words like number 11, lachen, where we find the velar fricative preceded by the vowel A and followed by the vowel schwa. So this is the environment where we find the velar fricative in example 11. So once we have the environments, we need to figure out what's happening with them. Are these two sounds in complementary distribution or not? Let's go through the words. So uh, if we look at the right side of the environment, we see that they share practically everything. For example, uh, words one and seven show that both of these sounds can occur at the end of the word. That's in ich and buch. So because they share this characteristic, this cannot be what distinguishes one from the other. So it's probable that we don't need to be looking at the right side of the environment. As a matter of fact, words three and eight uh, 
further reinforce the idea that the right side is not where the difference is because we see the, the phoneme T on the right side of both the palatal one and the velar one, as in mischte and flucht. So both sounds can have a T coming right after them. So that cannot be what distinguishes between the two. So let's take a look at the left part of the environment. With the palatal one, we find it we, we find that the vowels that come before it are vowels like e, a, u, I'm sorry, u, u, and these four. And we also have consonants like l and n. So these are the sounds that precede the palatal fricative. On the other hand, for the velar one, the sounds that precede it are vowels like u, u, o, and also vowels like long a and short a. So they do appear to be in complementary distribution because look at these two groups. None of the vowels here appear here. These two groups of sounds are completely different. So they must be what's conditioning the appearance of either the palatal or the velar alternative. These two sounds are in complementary distribution. Cool, but then what do we do next? We need to figure out what these sounds have in common so that we can try to come up with a phonological rule. So I separated them in natural classes. These are some kind of vowel. These are some kind of consonant. These are some other kind of vowel. And these are some other kind of vowel. So please try to find one feature that all of these sounds might have in common. Try to find one feature that these two consonants might have in common. Try to find one feature that these two vowels, I'm sorry, that these three vowels might have in common. And try to find a feature that these two vowels might have in common. You can go and get your IPA table. I put the vowels here so that you uh, can take a look at them. So what do these sounds have in common? One feature. But the, and also, what do these have in common? What do these and what do these? Give it a shot. Please pause the video. So let's see what kind of natural classes can we derive from them. For example, all of these vowels are front vowels. As we can see, we have here the e, the e, the rounded u, the rounded u. So all of these are in the front region. The l and the n are both sonorants. You could have also said that they're both voiced. You could have said that they're both alveolar, for example, because those are characteristics that they also share. But it kind of looks like the vowels might be where the explanation is. So take a look at these three. These three vowels are all back vowels. U, uh, uh, o. And these two are the same. One is just that one is long and one is short. And they are central. If you remember from last video, this a uh, is usually considered to be a central vowel. So we have uh, these sets of features, and they are indeed in complementary distribution because these two features are different from these two features. So what do we do with that? Oh, look, these are uh, in the wrong position. The first thing we need to do is to choose the base form for our phoneme. We could choose either of these, but to be honest, the palatal one is the one that appears in more environments. So you can find it preceded by vowels and consonants, whereas the velar one is only preceded by vowels. So because this one has more environments, it might be the everywhere else case. So let's just pick this, this one as the base. Then we would need to transform the palatal sound into the velar one. And we can do this by saying that it is transformed whenever it is preceded by a central vowel, like the a, or by a back vowel, like the u, the u, and the o. So whenever you find a vowel and the phoneme, you get you trigger the rule and then change the palatal to the uh, velar fricative. That might be the rule that we that might work, and then we would have an underlying form the word book that looks like this bush with the uh, palatal fricative which triggers the rule because you have a back vowel and then the phoneme and then the rule changes the palatal fricative 
into a velo fricative and we have buch. So this is one way that we can explain a change in German by using features. We could write our rules just by saying this happens whenever it is preceded by u or o or ö. But it would be easier to just write that it, that the change happens when the sound is preceded by a back vowel. So we're going to use features because phonological rules usually act on entire natural classes, not just an isolated sounds. And they're going to be very useful when we propose these rules.